What do you know? Luke Acre muted his mic again. You think after all these Monday mindsets, I would know to start the Monday mindset with an unmuted mic. Well, today we're going to talk about how to rewire your brain, improve your health. This probably is the number one hack for business that you can implement in your life to grow not only your life, but to grow your business. We're going to talk about it today, but I'm going to cue this intro. I hope you guys are ready to crush it this week. It is the week of gratitude, the week of thankfulness and it is going to be an amazing week. I will see you on the other side of this intro. There are no bad businesses. There are just those people who don't know enough to see the opportunities in the work they're in. If there seems to be no future or opportunity in it, it isn't always because it's not there, but perhaps only because we can't see it. Good morning. Welcome to another Monday Mindset. Brian, good morning. Lily, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for jumping on, especially during this Thanksgiving week. Today, we're going to talk about rewiring your brain. Um, if you rewire your brain this way, not only can it improve your health, I believe it will improve your life. It will improve your business. I'm going to talk about that today. I have been on the road. You notice I'm in a different room today. I'm actually in the room my wife grew up in. So we're at our in-laws down in Virginia for the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, but still showing up on this Monday mindset. Ryan, good to see you. Those who are joining in. Oh, my dad's joining in on Instagram. What's up, dad? So I'm in the room my wife grew up in. Um, just a little fun facts about myself and my wife. So we were high school sweethearts. We dated and went to college together, got married after college. And it's amazing. Time has flown by. We've been married about 11 years. And I'm sitting in this room, and this is the room actually my daughter Evelyn slept in last night. And I think to myself, my gosh, I remember this room growing up back from high school and when we were, you know, came home from college, stuff like that. And now my daughter's sleeping in this room. But it's really, you know, on cue with, you know, what my topic is today. So I wrote in the headline, you know, this, do this to rewire your brain, improve your health and change your life. And ultimately, because we're all in business and we're doing this Monday mindset to improve our business, you know, I believe this will improve your business as well. What am I referring to? I'm referring to gratitude. And I have a challenge for all of you today, right? We have to challenge ourselves. It's the week of Thanksgiving. We really should be practicing gratitude all year long, not just the week of Thanksgiving. But let me ask you this. What are you grateful for in this moment? Just take a second right now. Just chat in, whether you're on Instagram or you're here on the Insurance Syndicate Facebook page. Just chat in one thing or two things that you are grateful for in this moment. Could be family, could be your friends, could be your business, could be your health. You know, I often say to people, your worst day is somebody's dream day. That is perspective for you. Your worst day that you experience sometimes is somebody else's dream day. They could only dream of having what you have. I think the ability to wake up this morning and be able to get out of bed, to be here at my in-laws, and to have family that I actually want to come see, that we have a great relationship. How incredible is that? Gratitude is such an a powerful and important thing to implement in your life. And there was this video I saw that talked about, you know, if you deal with a lot of anxiety and stress, and I, it's a rhetorical question because all of us, we run businesses and we are out here hustling, right? 
And it is a lot of times very stressful. I was just in California last week. I'm in Virginia this week. I'm always moving. I'm always on the road. I have clients galore. And so there's a lot of stress and anxiety. And as they studied the brain, neuroscientists, as they studied the brain, what they have found is the part of your brain that deals with like anxiety and stress doesn't fire if the part of your brain that you think about what you're grateful for and thankfulness is firing. So meaning if you focus on gratitude and thankfulness, it actually like literally makes it so you can't think about your anxiety and your stress. And I thought that was so powerful. And I was thinking to myself, man, the next time I get into a stressful moment, the next time I feel down and out, I want to re kind of engage and start focusing on the things that I'm thankful for, because literally in your brain, you can't fire those two parts of your brain at the same time. I thought that was a really powerful thing. Here's another challenge for you. What if you woke up tomorrow with only the things that you were grateful for today? So what if you woke up tomorrow and only had the things that you were, that you showed gratefulness for today? You want to challenge your challenge yourself to show gratitude, to practice the art of thankfulness. I wrote this quote down by Oprah Winfrey. I thought it was actually really good. She said, the day you choose to be grateful for every single thing in your life, that's the day you become truly wealthy. And Oprah Winfrey, as we all know, is a, is a billionaire. I think she's worth $2 billion. And today, I don't want to just uh, remind you of gratitude and gratefulness. I want to give you just eight things that we rolled out on our podcast to encourage you to go say thank you and, and show appreciation to your clients, to your friends, to your family. Because here's the rule of thumb. What you appreciate, appreciates. So I invest in real estate, right? And a lot of people who follow me are in real estate. And I invest in real estate because as an asset, what I love about the real estate asset is that over the years, it appreciates in value. I literally have to do nothing and it just goes up three, 4% every year, sometimes even more on given years. What you appreciate though in your life appreciates in value. What are you showing appreciation for? If you ever think about your relationship, right? And I think about my wife, Megan, because I'm staring at a high school picture of her on the wall right here. I think about my wife, Megan, and I go, man, if I want my relationship with Megan to appreciate and value, am I showing the appreciation that is needed for that relationship? Am I showing the gratitude and the thankfulness for that relationship? And oftentimes, if you get vulnerable and just share with somebody what you appreciate about them, you would be amazed what it does for your relationship in your life. And so think about your clients. When was the last time that you showed appreciation for them? And what did you do? And this is a perfect time to do it because we're the week of Thanksgiving right now. So this is a perfect time. There's no excuses. I also want to make sure I challenge you guys to realize that um, when you show appreciation, when you show gratitude and thankfulness, it also improves your health. So there's been a lot of research on this. When they study the brain, there was a study done by UCLA's Mindfulness and Awareness Research Center. I wrote, wrote this down. It says, when regularly expressing gratitude, it actually changes, get this, the molecular structure of your brain. It keeps the gray matter in your brain functioning properly, and it keeps you healthier and happier. So literally just sitting down every single day and practicing the art of gratitude, practicing thankfulness can keep you healthier and happier. But yet sometimes we don't do it. We wake up and we immediately focus on our problems and we don't focus on the things that we're thankful for. And that's preaching to myself. I'm not preaching to anybody out there. I'm preaching to myself to remind myself this week of, hey, man, Luke, what you appreciate appreciates. Are you showing appreciation? So here are eight ideas that you guys should maybe uh, take advantage of last minute ideas for this week of Thanksgiving for your clients, because I want you to show appreciation for them. I want to start with a very simple one that all of you can do. And I think some of you have done because I've mentioned it here before on this show. One is pull out your phone this week and send a personal video message to your top 20% of clients. I'd grab my phone and show you as an example, but simply go, hey, Luke, thinking about you today. I know it's the week of Thanksgiving, and I just want to send you a personal message letting you know that I appreciate you being in my life. I appreciate you being a client. I'm thankful for the business that we've done or the friendship that we have. I can't believe we haven't gotten together recently. We should grab a beer or a coffee sometime, but I just hope you have an amazing day, and I'm grateful that you're a part of my life. 
and shoot that video message to the top 20%. If you're a real uh, ninja, do it for everybody in your database, but take the top 20% that drive 80% of your business, shoot them a personal video message, thanking them for being in your life. You'll be amazed what that will do for you. And it's free, only costs you a little bit of time on Thanksgiving, maybe when you're watching the football game. Second idea that I have for you here is get some gift cards to the local businesses in your area, because we have Small Business Saturday coming up. I think it's November 25th. You want to support the small businesses in your community. You are probably a small business in your community, and you want people to support you. And what you give, you, you tend to get. But get some gift cards to local businesses in your community and give those to your clients. Give those to your top 20% or some of your clients. Do what in real estate is called a pop buy. So I think this was a Brian Buffini. He's a big time coach in real estate. Came up with this term called the pop buy. And it's essentially that you are driving through the neighborhood of one of your client's homes and you just shoot them a simple text going, hey, I'm in the neighborhood. Just want to see if I could stop by for five minutes. You stop by, you give them the gift card, thank them for being in your life, um, You know, share with them. It's to local business in the area. That will go a long way for you. If you don't have um, maybe the time to do a local like a pop by or buy a local business card, gift card, then do a e-gift card. So I, I see someone that I follow in real estate, Shannon Gillette. She does an amazing job on like Mother's Day and Father's Day, I believe. She buys a Starbucks e-gift card and she ends up buying all of the moms in her like sphere a free coffee on her. And I thought that's an incredible idea for you that you could literally maybe get a Starbucks e-gift card send it out, text it to your people, maybe include the video message, say coffee's on me this week. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I appreciate you being in my life. That's another thing that you could do. Here's another idea for you. If you're searching for ideas for gifts for your clients, um, this one, Josh, my CMO came up with um, when we were talking on the podcast, it was experiences. So buy for your client or gift to your client an experience. So what do I mean by an experience? Maybe a cooking class a wine tasting, right? There's all these like uh, wine and painting type classes that you can do. Um, you could even do a round of golf uh, for your clients. Buy your clients an experience because oftentimes what gets you um, remembered by your clients is impact and things that you, they can actually physically partake in. Obviously, it's going to make a bigger impact for them. So you could buy your client a gift like an experience, Another idea would be donate to a charity that your client supports. Donate to a charity in your client's name, right? So oftentimes, if you get to know your database and your clients, you'll find out things that they're passionate about, that they're into. Donate to that charity in your client's name. It's an easy thing for you to do, but it's a powerful thing because you're giving back, you're supporting your client, you're doing something good. And I always teach people about psychology because psychology and marketing matters. Really, marketing is tapping into psychology and how the human brain thinks and works in order to get the human brain to take action on things. And there's this thing in psychology called the halo effect. And the halo effect is essentially when you do something good, and people see that good. They associate that good with other things that you do. So you don't want to give to charity just because it's good or just because of what it will do for you. You want to give to charity because it's good and it's the right thing to do. But as you give to charity, people naturally associate that good with how you run your business, with who you are as a person. So when people see you giving back in that way, they naturally will see that in the way you run your business. And that does well for you because it builds credibility and authority. Here's another idea for you. Give gifts of self-care or give homemade gifts. So a gift of self-care could be something like a meditation app. So we actually buy for all of our employees a subscription to the Calm app. And the Calm app is a simple app on your phone, which allows you to meditate. And there's a ton, I mean, just tons of different options in this application. And we give it to all of our employees as kind of a self-care type app that we want to provide for them. That could be something that you provide for your core clients just as a thank you. And it could be something that maybe you use and you thought they might enjoy and you could send to them. Other obvious ones would be like a day spa or, or buying your client a massage or something like that. Um, I remember once we found out that Brian Harris, one of the people that I use in my talks a lot, he's a uh, top 1% advisor 
um, in, I believe it's Annapolis, Maryland. We were out in Phoenix, Arizona at a conference and my VP of corporate sales and I found out he was there at the conference. Um, I think he was there with his wife. And so we ended up buying them a massage, him and his wife at the hotel. And that made a huge impact for him. And he stood by our booth and helped us even pitch. And, and we weren't expecting that, but it was just something he enjoyed. And I know that made a big impact. And every time we see him, you know, we, he brings stuff like that up that we had done for him in the past. So there's another idea for you. And then homemade gifts. So take another walk down memory lane. Um, so my mom, right, growing up, there's eight kids in my family. My dad's a pastor, so we didn't have a lot of money. And so my mom would actually make homemade ornaments every Christmas. And before Christmas, she would go out to the downtown mall in Charlottesville, not too far from here. And she would sell those ornaments on the downtown mall. And that was the way she actually paid for our Christmas gifts. So she would make these homemade ornaments. But one of the things she did was she would gift those. So my mom's the... Um, pastor's wife, right? So because my dad's the pastor of our church and she would gift those to people in the church. And I still to this day will go to people's houses. I have to check my mother-in-law's tree, but I'll still go to people's houses that have been in my parents' church for a long time and see the ornaments on their tree, right? And so it, an ornament will stick with people, but that's just something you could do. But other homemade gift ideas that I've seen that are really popular, it's like a movie basket, so you can very easily buy like a gift card for Netflix or for Amazon Prime or something like that, where, you know, like Prime Movie or Prime Video. And then you can get snacks and popcorn and stuff and put it into a gift basket and give it to your clients. All of these I'm just trying to give you as ideas to spark creativity for you so you can show gratitude and appreciation to the people who drive your business, right? I hope you do it for all your clients, but think about that top 20%, those relationships that mean so much to you that drive 80% of your business. What are you doing for them as we close out the year to show appreciation? Don't miss this opportunity, even if it's just a simple text message. Don't miss that opportunity because what you appreciate will appreciate. Just remember that what you appreciate will appreciate. And not only can gratitude rewire our brain for ourselves to keep us happier, to keep us motivated, to keep us off of anxiety and focused on what's good, but it also will trigger in other people when you show appreciation, it will trigger reciprocity where they want to give, right? And they want to actually respond in giving. So I just want to encourage you today as we wrap up this Monday mindset, it's the week of thankfulness. I could not help, but not, you know, I had to talk about thankfulness today. And I want to encourage you to practice gratitude, to use maybe one of these ideas, or if you have another idea, chat it in and show appreciation to your clients as we go this week and make sure you spend time with your loved ones because I'm here in Virginia to spend time with my loved ones, to get together with family because that's what life's all about is relationships. I love you guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Let's have a great one. Get out there and win this week for you, for your clients, for your family. Let's make it happen. Have a great one.